Usually when you have a speaker, it becomes a household name or the person already was a household name. I'm thinking Nancy Pelosi, Paul Ryan, Kevin McCarthy, John Boehner. I've gotten quite a few texts. Who's Mike Johnson within the past hour? And I think a lot of people feel that way. So what do you make of it that we don't know much about him? We do know that the New York Times described him as the, quote, most important architect of the Electoral College uh, objections. But aside from that, not that much is known, at least publicly on a national level, about Mike Johnson. What do you make of that? Well, uh, I think that probably helped him in the election. He wasn't as polarizing uh, a figure. And it's not surprising that the first thing that the uh, uh, New York Times would do was would be to jump into the uh, Democrats column and try to figure out everything that's wrong with this guy. I do think that they highlighted the biggest problem, which is uh, the peaceful transfer of power in a democracy depends upon recognizing the winner of an election. And if you want to challenge uh, the integrity of that election, there are standard procedures for doing that. Those were challenged. They failed. We're now seeing that they, they didn't just fail because of troubles with timing or standing or something like that. Trump lost. And the fact that there are all these people who still say that he didn't lose, and foremost among them Trump, uh, is a big problem. And the fact that Mike Johnson was associated with that uh, may have helped him get elected as the leader, but I think will be uh, a stain going forward. The bigger issue, I think, though, is are some substantive questions that they'll have to decide on going forward, uh, particularly funding for Ukraine. Uh, there's a lot of support for funding for Israel, but the, the issue has to do with funding for Ukraine and uh, whether or not the House is willing uh, to, uh, they only control, the Republicans only control the House, they don't control the Senate, they don't control the White House. It's hard to get complete leverage without, in effect, shutting down the government. Of course, you'll be blamed by all the media uh, for doing that. So I think Johnson has problems there. What's he going to do? And I think the second issue is, can he start raising significant money for the re-election uh, of a uh, Republican House majority? That's a major issue. Kevin McCarthy was outstanding at doing it. Now they booted him out. So it'll be an interesting question as to whether they can recover. I want to talk about the time that we're in. As you mentioned, Ukraine's at war. Within the past three weeks, Israel is now at war. There's also a looming uh, government shutdown. And this, while this all was happening, we saw Republicans infighting. There was no leader within the House. So do you have faith that Republicans in Congress can govern? No. Um, I mean, I, I don't think, nor do I have faith that the Democrats can govern. Um, there was a, a, a quote in a book by Dickens 150, 200 years ago, in which uh, one of the characters is asked, how did he go broke? And he said, uh, slowly, then rapidly. <laughs> and that's how our political system seems to be cracking. And you can see, and a lot of people are deeply worried about this kind of dysfunction. Uh, and they're worried also because more than at any time in my lifetime, I think, um, the differences between the two American parties are ideological and framed in ideological, big ideological terms. American politics used to be considered mostly pragmatic and people talked about pragmatic differences and often compromised in the middle. But if you just think about issues like guns, abortion, all kinds of issues in which uh, if you tried to get a kind of compromise in the middle, you would be subject to very difficult primary challenges uh, when you tried to get elected, if you compromised on what Democrats would call women's reproductive rights, you would be challenged from the left. 
if you uh, if you said I'm in favor of 22 weeks or 24 weeks um, in, instead of uh, 10 weeks or six weeks or something like that, you might be challenged from the right among the Republican primary. And so there's all of this, and uh, there's a looming government shutdown. But be be underlying that issue of the shutdown is that we're just spending vastly more money than we're taking in. That's a problem for the country, but it's a special problem for the Democrats because they're the party of big spenders. And they solve every problem by sloshing money at it. And people are just uh, recognize that you can't keep doing that. It's, it's having huge inflationary impact. 